Magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI, has long been used to evaluate and diagnose conditions relating to an aging brain. But is quantitative MRI the next frontier in evaluating tissue pathology? Dr. Richard Spencer from the National Institute of Health is here to discuss. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, thanks so much for the opportunity to talk about my work. Absolutely. Okay, let's get right into your work. You've brought some visuals for us today. Yeah. Can you explain a little bit about your work and your research? Well, first of all, I just want to mention quantitative MRI it has been coined recently to describe what we do to quantify our MR results, but really it's been an effort since the beginning of MRI to produce quantitative results. It's just that now it's more and more possible with advanced techniques, both in instrumentation and analysis. Okay, so now can we get to one of your slides and explain what we're looking at here on the screen? Sure, roughly this is a, this shows the structure of a nerve and an axon in the myelin sheath. So on the left you see the, the actual uh, body of the nerve cell and with its dendrites and various, and its nucleus, other, uh, a lot of other complex structures in there. But then there's a protuberance or a fiber that comes off that called an axon. And many nerves, not all, but many nerves are myelinated, meaning that there's this myelin sheath, which is, myelin is a fatty sheath that forms around the nerve fibers called axons. And it really has two functions. One function is to potentiate electrical transmission along the axon. In other words, make it, it helps the, it helps speed up the transmission and create accurate transmission. It also forms a protective shell around the axon so it saves it from degradation. When that myelin sheath is degraded, what happens is the nerve transmission is interrupted or doesn't go as efficiently or as quickly and in later cases or at later stages, the axon itself and the nerve itself suffer damage that can be irreparable. So what are the challenges in trying to measure myelin? It doesn't have its own intrinsic signal. We see myelin through seeing water. So what a lot of people don't realize is that all of MRI, or I should say 99.5% of MRI, is based on mapping water. Mm -hmm. It's just water. So no matter what tissue we're looking at, we're always looking at the water in that tissue. In the case of myelin, we look at the water inside these sheaths. And so your solution to so our solution to this is to look at the full signal. The MRI device is just it generates a certain kind of electrical signal. And one of those kinds of signals can look like a decaying exponential, for example, which is a curve that looks like this. Only instead of this curve emanating from one type of water molecule, there can be two or even three different components inside that, inside that decay curve. And our challenge is to dissect those from each other so that we can specify which part is from myelin, which part is from non-myelin water. And so can you give us an example of some of the results that you found using this, this process? So these are all myelin water fraction maps. So again, myelin water fraction coined by Alex McKay uh, in the 90s is a quantitative way to look at the amount of myelin in a way that really is proportional to the signal that we see. The, the young unimpaired is sort of the standard. That's what we would all like to see. Uh, older, you can see there's a loss of myelin with a much less bright yellow coloration throughout. Mild cognitive impairment, which is a condition that can be viewed as a, either a stable condition of impaired thought or a precursor to things like Alzheimer's disease. But we begin to see loss of, focal loss of myelin, uh, that where you see these more brightly colored regions being replaced by some of the darker blue. In Alzheimer's, that progresses to an even greater extent, and then vascular dementia has uh, r patterns very closely related to Alzheimer's. And this w work was done in conjunction with my colleague Mustafa Burhara at the NIA. How promising are these results to you? Well, I think that these are very promising. These are still early in the sense that although we've used this method quite a bit, we're still very actively developing ad additional advanced methods. And that's the work that I'll be primarily presenting here tomorrow in my, in my talk where we're talking about, we're, we're moving beyond just the Bayesian method into other more sophisticated techniques in solution of inverse problems, really more in the area of applied mathematics. Do you think quantitative MRI will eventually become the gold standard when it comes to treating brain health? I think so, and I think in the world of myelin, it's especially exciting because for the first time, there are actually therapies on the horizon to actually treat demyelinating disease. I should mention that myelin loss occurs throughout life, but there's intrinsic body processes that will regenerate the myelin. They require a lot of cellular energy though, so, they're, so they can't always keep up. And when that falls into disarray and the balance between, between repair of myelin and degradation of myelin goes the wrong way, then you can end up with clinical disease. But I think these methods are going to be even more important as therapies are developed and uh, patients have to be followed, 
therapies have to be titrated and adjusted to their clinical response as well as to their imaging response. So I'm very excited about the possibilities for this kind of work. Well, we're very excited that you're here and that you're going to be presenting, and we certainly appreciate all of your research and for your time today. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much.